Hello Exiles, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and uh, I've been gone for a while, quite a while actually, uh, and I was just a little burnt out, uh, playing a lot of Path of Exile for like 7-8 years straight almost every day. I decided to take a little break and had some stuff going on in real life, but uh, the new league does look really good, and I would like to try to put out some builds for this. So this is going to be a quick overview of what I'm considering for the league start for 3.25. And uh, currently it is going to be either Molten Strike or Frostblades, and it will be either a Slayer or a Warden. And they're going to be pretty similar, and I'll talk about... Uh, why I currently have it set up as a Slayer, um, and what the benefits of going Warden would be. Uh, currently, I have a pretty simple POB here. Uh, it is going to be just an endgame tree and a leveling tree with very, very simple gear. Uh, this is going to be my early game. It's just some attack speed and some damage. And then like attributes, resists, and crafted uh, damage. So I got that on like my jewelry and stuff. So uh, basically you're probably going to have much better stuff than this. Uh, but one of the reasons I decided to go with this particular build is they took a part of the tree that was already pretty efficient for melee builds. Uh, and made it even more efficient by adding a couple of things like this new dual wielding cluster for instance and uh, possibly most importantly this leader of the pack right here so now we have a lot of very juicy stuff right in the beginning this also applies for ranger it's just uh one more point out i believe actually uh yeah one more point out so you're not going to have a lot of a difference, and honestly, Ranger is closer to some of the other stuff I want, so Warden might be a good choice as well. Um, the benefits of going uh, Slayer over Warden, or why you would want to choose either one of them, uh, Slayer has got a little bit better defenses. So there are some obvious choices like Bane of Legends, 20% more damage against the unique enemies, uh, that kind of thing, and just more damage while clearing. Uh, but then when we get to the higher ones, we have a couple of choices to make. So Overleech is the main reason, uh, especially with Molten Strike. If you get Instant Leech, for instance, uh, with the Mastery, which I picked up here in the late game, but in the early game you can pick up by getting uh, Vitality Void and picking it up there. Um, when you have that, it is you're going to be basically getting life gain on hit which is extremely good with all the molten strike balls and then uh, you'll also have your leech just going over time on top of that so anything that doesn't one shot you is probably not going to kill you at all and you can combine that with other defenses the first three points uh, if you're going crit overwhelm is going to be very strong uh, there are some new crit clusters that we can take advantage of. Nice thing about Molten Strike is each ball procs chances separately. So like chance to blind, each ball is going to proc that separately. Chance to bleed, uh, each ball is going to proc that separately. So we're not going to want to convert in either case uh, if we're going to go for this efficient route. And this is kind of before you get endgame geared and can crit cap without all of these tricks. Uh, but in the early and mid game, this is going to help you cap out your crit really quickly and very easily uh, between that and the overwhelm. So what these kind of do for you, you already have some good crit around here like Lethality, like Twin Terrors, uh, you get like the Heart Seeker thing. That, that stuff's all well and good and you get a little bit from uh, One with Nature as well. However, uh, you get a ton of crit from here. So... The Blind Mastery, uh, you get crit 50% crit against blinded enemies, uh, and then another 25%, so there's 75%, and another 60%. That's a pretty huge amount of crit right there, uh, more than a Diamond Flask. And similar situation here, you get crit strike with attacks, crit strikes with attacks, that's 30 80 percent so that's already 110 and then you get another 80 percent that's 190 percent crit chance against bleeding enemies um even with a small chance to bleed which will be 20 percent you're hitting very quickly and all your balls and your initial melee strike all have uh 
a chance to inflict the bleed separately. So you're going to be applying that bleed pretty much immediately all the time and all of a sudden you get a 190% chance to crit. That's absolutely insane for uh, the points spent. And you get crit multi against bleeding enemies, 30, which is a pretty substantial amount. Uh, blind also has the added effect of making you more evasive and making enemies less evasive. So it makes your accuracy go farther. Um, and it makes your so you don't even really need to accuracy cap. I'm probably going to anyway. Uh, but yeah, and once you have like when I switch over to like all of my end game setup, you'll see uh, accuracy is capped. Uh, crit chance is going to be relatively high, um, you know, for very little investment. So that kind of stuff is really nice. Uh, and crit chance, of course, can be much higher uh, depending on the items and everything. So got all of that going, but let's switch back uh, to early game real quick. And I'll go over the reasons uh, why I think this is going to be so strong. So, of course, all melee got a huge buff. Uh, one of the nice things about these buffs is in... Uh, basically scales damage quicker obviously uh but particularly things like flat damage uh like quality on weapons especially after the change where it's going to be more multipliers is going to be more effective uh that kind of thing and we already get a lot of percentage uh damage very early on in the tree so just heading out here uh what your leveling is probably going to look like is you're going to head over straight away to gladiators perseverance this is just uh regular attack damage it's not physical or anything because molten strike and frost blades did lose the physical tag so uh they're not going to benefit for things that you know uh increase your physical damage anymore in a lot of cases but uh you can get your non ball strike skills target one additional enemy right out of the gate uh grab that and then you can head straight down and grab precise technique that plus precision is just going to give you 40 percent more attack damage um you are going to want that very early uh then you grab leader of the pack and the reservation mastery put on some heralds you're going to need herald of ash especially if you are frost blades because the next thing you're going to do is grab the uh attack ignite chance up through burning brutality um and the fire mastery which makes it so critical strikes do not inherently ignite and you do a hundred percent increased damage with hits against ignited enemies so for five points here you're getting uh a bunch of attack speed, 12% attack speed, and 100% increased damage, which is very efficient early on. Uh, this is pretty efficient. Uh, this is also quite efficient. So, dual wielding now gives you 20% block chance as a base. So that was buffed, and they added a bunch more block chance on the tree. So early on, compared to before, you're going to have a lot of block chance. You have the base 20, you're getting 3 plus 3 attack speed from th these three nodes. Uh, and then you're getting 10 here. So that's 19 more block chance. That already puts you at 39%. And then, of course, you can grab this 42% uh, block chance early on. Very strong uh, block and evasion combo extremely well. And on top of that, if you're wielding two different weapons, uh, Frost Blades and I believe Molten Strike as well. Uh, let me double check. Uh, yeah, they're not item dependent it's any melee weapon so you can literally just use the two best melee weapons you find so you're always while leveling uh, if you're just iding weapons you're just going to be able to slot on uh, your two best weapons um, you know axe and sword dagger and claw uh, whatever you have the stats for and whatever you have that's best uh, you know maces scepters i mean scepters are kind of slow probably not scepters but uh, for the most part your best two melee weapons uh, that are different, throw them in a different, or throw them in each hand, and you get 60% damage, uh, really nice. So once again, you get 9% attack speed, 60% damage. Not quite as efficient as the Fire Mastery one, but still quite good with a bunch of added defensive utility and 8% movement speed while leveling is great too. Now, after that, of course you have like some life to grab and uh you can get point blank point blank is very good with molten strike 
Uh, specifically, if you are going Frost Blades, you will not be getting point blank, of course. Uh, but everything else here applies exactly the same to Frost Blades as it does to Molten Strike. You'll get everything except for point blank. Uh, that's where it'll deviate slightly. Uh, like maybe you want to go towards Fangs of Frost, or maybe you just want to start heading up here and uh, getting some of this stuff going this way like heading up to herbalism for instance so you can start picking up like acuity and uh, uh you know whatever you end up getting here uh, another nice thing is the addition of thrill of battle which reduces mana cost of attacks that's going to be necessary and mana per enemy hit with attacks which on molten strike uh is going to do a few things uh, that, along with Instant Leech, is going to make it so we can maintain uh, the new... Oh, what are they called? Um, oop, hang on, I'll just craft one. Tincture. Uh, you'll be able to very easily uh, maintain a Tincture between that and uh, Instant Leech. With the Mana Burn, especially if you pick up like a Tincture Mastery early on, uh, before you have everything kind of sorted. Uh, you can do the first six Mana Burn applied to you have no effect, and then just turn it off whenever you need. Because um, it'll ramp a little bit slower. If you start running out of mana, you just turn it off, and that's fine. Tinctures seem very, very powerful. There's one that gives Ellie damage. There's one that gives crit. Uh, I don't really think you'll need the one that gives crit, but that is uh, the way it's set up. Uh, reservation mastery early on is going to be very strong. So that's kind of how the early game is going to play it out. The damage is very high. Uh, even having to go and get uh, all the way over and get this dual wielding mastery early on um, with the Slayer. I've already tested this build. I've been playing this a similar build for a couple of leagues on and off, especially in solo cell found. Uh, is very, very powerful early game with, you know, whatever gear you get. I've done it in solo cell found uh, run throughs to get like my two uh, first watchstones and it's been very strong. And if you need extra resistances and accuracy, weathered hunters here too, uh, it you just have access to a lot of stuff. You have access to Beef and Wisdom of the Glade that you can respec early on. If you need more strength, you got Master of Arena and Mana Flows. Uh, so, yeah, you're absolutely set. Uh, if you want to get the leech early, it's right there. Tons of great stuff. You can even pick up Graceful uh, uh, Assault and get chance to get Onslaught on kill as you level. And it's, uh, yeah, it's right there. So, very big stuff. Uh, this is just an insanely position, insanely efficient position on the tree now. And it's right in between Ranger and Duelist. Perfect. Okay. Um, now I'll just quickly pop onto the higher level one and go over that. Oh, uh, skill gems early on skill gems. Uh, you'll probably do molten strike ancestral call and like just added cold damage or something early on. Uh, later on, you'll switch to combustion. Combustion is going to help once you have, uh, the fire mastery it's just consistent and it's good damage especially once you get anger going uh but early on you can just use uh, whatever added damage added lightning if you want for shocks doesn't really matter uh you'll get small shocks it won't make a huge difference even with the increased added effectiveness because of all the balls maybe you'll get bigger ones with frost blades um but uh, and then elemental damage with the tax and fire penetration, and you'll want to get multi strike. This uh, tree setup is basically, uh, or the early game tree setup was basically up until first lab. Uh, I like Bane of Legends first. You can get Brutal Fervor first, that's fine. Uh, probably not worth it to go overwhelm until probably third lab you start going crit. Um, you could pick up impact for leveling just for the accuracy it's helpful and masterful form is something to consider late the first three points are pretty locked in so bane of legends brutal fervor overwhelm those are kind of the ones you definitely want um and then from there it's kind of uh you know pick and choose I don't necessarily think it's worth getting Headsman uh, because you can get Calling Strike on Mark for Death and then get the uh, Frenzy Charges on hit early on, uh, which I've already got up here. Sorry for the lawn mowing, good old summer. Um, 
So yeah, Brutal Fervor for Overleech and reduce damage taken while leeching. Insane. Uh, okay. But yeah, the rest of the skill gems, uh, Anger, Herald of Ash, Precision while leveling. You can grab Flammability early on. You're not going to have Mark on hit yet. Uh, Leap Slam with faster attacks and momentum if you're using an axe and a sword like I've got it set up here. Uh, axe and sword otherwise if you're using like claw dagger claw sword dagger sword anything like that whirling blades instead uh leap slam it's probably a little bit better and you'll want to get frost blink as soon as you can whether that be in act six or you can just do library quest if you want uh, whichever works for you all right so moving on oh and bandits. Uh, bandits, I think now it's probably worth either helping Oak, um, or you still might just kill kill all, honestly. An extra skill point is going to be pretty good. Uh, this is a pretty skill point stretch tree, so but you can always respect later. Maybe just help Oak because you're not going to get a ton of health in the early game, and even in softcore that'll help. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the basic setup there. Um, just make sure you're crafting, you know, flat damage on your jewelry early on. That's important. Um, and you're probably going to want like a heavy belt. Otherwise, you're going to be forced to take beef. And you're probably going to want strength on your amulet too. So kind of look out for some extra strength. And once you get frost blink, you'll need some intelligence too. So attributes are important. All right. Um, now get everything over here I don't really have all of this fully set up yet like uh, I don't have my frost blink uh, set up but yeah there you go um, so end game uh, what this is going to look like is uh, basically yeah and I kind of have it set up just for burning ignited and uh, projectile and we're leeching uh, end game will also have frenzy charges so that as you can see is going to give a considerable amount of damage to the balls uh, this calculates the balls and the melee hit separately uh, so works out to be like 1.7 million with fairly um, against standard bosses so just when you're doing map bosses um, just pretty easy setup uh the items here are well there's some good stuff in here but i'll go over that like the kind of items you want to get first i think yoke is a high priority uh you know for any kind of elemental attack build just being able to shock with all of your elemental damage is good uh but yeah once we add the initial setup uh the next thing we are going to do is like grab life that's around uh head up here grab herbalism uh, go over here, over to one with nature, that'll help with the resists, give us some more damage, grab acuity, um, gonna, oh, very important to grab multi-shot pretty early, just because the extra ball is basically a more damage multiplier, it's like, uh, you know, 25% more damage on your uh, projectiles, which is pretty nice. Uh, it works out to be like less than 15% more damage overall, but that's still really good for, you know, a point on the skill tree. Not a lot of stuff does that. Um, then, like, we switch over to this closer to other good stuff, Leech Mastery. Uh, if you were taking the Leech Mastery down here, uh, you can spec out of Gladiator's Perseverance and either get the Attack Mastery here, or you can just get Gloves uh, that give you an additional strike that's going to be the ideal setup uh elemental mastery is going to be pretty important uh to invert the invert everything you're not going to do that on warden because of scorch uh but for slayer that's going to be very important uh, and i'll kind of get into that when i talk about the differences between the two and why you would want to potentially choose warden instead uh, obviously i don't have my defenses set up here at all you'd just get like evasion maybe evasion armor hybrid you'd cap your resistances uh you would try to get like you know uh depending on if you have masterful form you could try to get endurance charge generation otherwise you might craft minimum endurance charges on your jewelry if you have room if you can get some good jewelry uh, so that would kind of be the setup there. Uh, spell suppression is also very important. 
uh, until you get spell suppress capped by your gear you want to take the mastery that makes it lucky and that with entrench and no other uh, suppression chance on your tree will give you 87 percent which isn't that bad it'll be enough to get you up at least through yellow maps fairly safely um but once you get around like upper yellow maps you you are going to want to cap your suppression for sure uh so make sure you're doing that and uh, then you can, of course, spec out of the uh, spell suppression mastery and free up a point. And I don't think there are any other masteries here that are necessarily super worth taking uh, besides that one. So uh, you can get that uh, and just spend the point elsewhere. So that's kind of the setup there. Uh, other things, uh, we're reducing projectile speed and getting the less projectile speed mastery. This will make sure your balls are clumped up more. Um, if you can get some area of effect, that's useful too, uh, somehow or another, just because you know the balls will overlap more. So you're making sure you're getting the full DPS. Most bosses are big enough, their hitboxes are big enough that just with the reduced uh, projectile speed and less projectile speed that'll be enough to make sure all the balls are hitting bosses but just for like rares and stuff some extra aoe is helpful as well uh and yeah the the tree setup is pretty simple uh in terms of anoint you have things like charisma that can be very helpful that'll let you fit in uh grace more easily uh like here i also have enlighten without enlighten i'd have to uh, either lower level precision, which is fine because we have blind, so I could lower my precision to like, you know, level 9 or 10, still have enough mana cost to uh, maintain everything, still be hit chance capped, lowers my crit a little bit, not a big deal. Uh, in terms of gem setup, multi-strike uh, is very important. Uh, increased crit damage is quite useful. Um, you could you know set something else up immolate seems to do the most damage since we have uh, a bunch of crit chance uh, we have some extra burn chance on top of that it just has the biggest number on it and then elemental damage with attacks um with frost blades you'd probably want to try to get some uh some trinity setup be doing fire damage as well uh, with heat shiver get a good amount of cold damage uh you might have to switch off anger because it might throw the balance off uh or you might just have to get a bunch of extra cold damage i actually think fizz now with the new damage effectiveness is way better than flat cold damage so uh previously in the end game like once you got past a certain point physical damage outscaled flat cold damage anyway uh, but now, I think even in like the early and intermediate stages, especially with the weapon quality changes, uh, even mediocre physical weapons are going to outscale uh, flat damage, flat cold damage on a Frostblades build. So I think that is going to be the case now. Uh, however, one of the kind of counterpoints to that is they made Hatred a lot worse. Uh, hatred is about as good it's only twice as good as these two points on the tree winter spirit or it's only about twice as good sorry as the as the winter spirit and the node before it which is uh not great and that's at level 20. yeah um hatred kind of sucks now it does scale with like buff effect and uh and you know aura effect that kind of thing but still it just doesn't seem good anymore unfortunately um but Frostblade should scale well enough. You might run it anyway if you have a really good physical weapon. <laughs> Excuse me. Might run it anyway. And, uh, you know, I don't know what else you're putting in there. I guess you could just run another defensive uh, thing. Maybe you're running Determination. Get Grace Determination with Hybrid Armor Evasion. If the new armor bases are, or the new, uh, yeah, armor bases are high enough, that might help with scaling. Maybe you do something like that. Plus, you can easily scale like armor evasion hybrid around here. Get the armor evasion mastery. Uh, good stuff all around. So that is that. Um, other skill gem setups. Um, Assassin's Mark, Mark on Hit, Life Tap, of course. Um, you know, just keeps everything up. Uh, precision, Frost Blink, and I still like Steel Skin, but if you do do some 
you know, determination nonsense. Uh, you know, just uh, maybe molten shell is better, but I've gotten really used to just, you know, reflexing steel skin. I like it a lot. It's something that I'm comfortable playing with. So, you know, whatever, whatever defensive utility you want. I don't think the banners are very good right now. Uh, I'm glad they got rid of totems. I don't like micromanage you know, play. I didn't like the fact that totems die. Banners don't die. Uh, so there's that. But yeah, big fan of that. So finally, I'm going to go over uh, Warden and what I would do if I were a Warden. So benefits of Warden for Molten Strike. Uh, Oath of Spring. Once you have Yoke, which I didn't really go over the items, but for both the Frostblades and the Molten Strike version, Yoke of Suffering is... Uh, core item, of course. Uh, once you have Yoke, uh, you can shock with your, you know, all your elemental damage. Since you're always getting 2% on Oath of Spring, you're going to stack up these shocks to 50 really quick. That's 100% increased damage taken. So that's a 100% uh, multiplier. Uh, you know, things stack, certain things stack with it, like your Intimidate or you know, these points up here that, uh, that ta marked enemies take increased damage, those uh, stack additively, but most of the things in the game do stack multiplicatively with shock, and getting 100% more is, uh, is quite a lot. So, and like I said, you're stacking this faster than any other build pretty much on Molten Strike, or, you know, more than most builds. You know, six attacks per second, uh, six balls plus one melee strike, so that's seven, and, you know, seven times six is, like, 42 shocks per second. That means you're almost full stacking in one second up to 100 damage. Uh, once you're on something for two seconds, even if you're kind of having to move around or whatever, you're probably going to be full stacked. Avatar of the Wilds is the craziest of all time, um buff uh as far as like damage buffs go 80 percent more elemental damage while i'm bound now it is uh you know time limited and you do have to build to it but there's a couple of things here first of all um each elemental element will uh separately give you unbound stacks uh, we're applying all of the elements very quickly in Frost Blades and uh, Molten Strike. I think there's like an internal cooldown, 0.2 seconds. But if you are able to get more than five attacks per second, which is quite easy, and you are applying all three, you know, elemental damage types, that's 15 per second. So after a few seconds, uh, not only are they going to be fully stacked on shocks, but all of a sudden you're going to get, you know, 80% more damage. Uh, that's pretty big. I think it only works with elemental ailments. Yeah, when you inflict an elemental ailment. If you can figure out how to get, um, you know, one of the other elemental ailments that isn't shock, ignite, or uh, like, you know, this replaces, scorch replaces uh, ignite, but if you can figure out how to get like brittle or something without getting rid of freeze. Oh yeah, chill counts too, so you're actually getting four. Uh, so you're getting 20 per second, takes five seconds. If you can figure out another one, you can cut like another second off of that. Um, and then it's up for 10 seconds. So you'll have a huge uptime of 80% more damage. Uh, let's just say you have your main four, your chill, freeze, shock, ignite, uh, all of that stuff. So, you know, 20 per second takes uh, five seconds to get up and then it's eight seconds. So that's a uh, 66.6 .6 repeating percent uptime on 80% more damage. Uh, that's pretty huge. It's a big damage multiplier. Um, and then you have a couple of things to consider. Oath of Winter is going to be, uh, you need this if you're playing Frostblades for sure. Uh, because this is going to allow you to permafreeze things and more importantly than anything this is going to be this is the number one thing that Frostblades needed to kill ubers without having to over gear so Frostblades always needed an absurd amount of gear to kill ubers uh, oath of winter now gives you a stacking debuff that gives you more freeze duration uh, that means you're going to basically it's inevitable that you start proccing you know your freezes constantly that is really, really big. 
and uh, yeah, it's you're gonna need this. It's going to make it's gonna enable all of your like Trinity and your uh, your heat shiver, all that kind of stuff uh, on bosses, and it's gonna give you bigger shocks because of that, because of the yoke. Uh, so yeah, Oath of Winter is nuts for Frost Blades, not so much for Molten Strike. Uh, Molten Strike can take Oath of Summer. Uh, and what we would do is we would simply get rid of the Elemental Mastery. Um, and we would get rid of the Fire Mastery because uh, we would no longer be igniting. And probably this whole tree. So saves that gives us six points to play with. Put somewhere probably in like a Cluster Jewel. Eventually you're going to switch to a Cluster Jewel and be specking out of stuff anyway. Uh, seven points if you count the Attack Mastery once you get up to that point. But uh, so... Yeah, Scorch, you can inflict an additional Scorch. Uh, once your hits get big enough, you'll be uh, reducing enemies' resistances by 60%. Then you'll have your Penetration. And then what we might do is we might add an additional Curse. We could get like Whispers of Doom Anointed and add like a Flammability on Hit Setup or something. Uh, and we can be reducing resistances by quite a lot. Uh, pretty big there. Um, as far as defensive, we have a few options. Um, well, we have like the, the tincture stuff, which is always doable. We'll have to see how strong tincture is. Uh, seasoned Hunter isn't relevant, but Enduring uh, Suffusion might be possible. I, we can't take two of them, so we would just be taking Enduring Suffusion because you are going to probably want Oath of Summer, Avatar of the Wilds, and Oath of Spring. Um, Bark Skin is interesting, so we'd have to drop something uh however bark skin kind of has a synergy with a couple of things that we did on frostblade trickster already uh so it's really nice with the combination of block and evasion and wind dancer uh because similar to wind dancer uh it gives you more evade chance if you've been hit and blocks count as a hit and there's now more block chance available on the tree there's also more as like a baseline so you get kind of an interesting uh, little synergy here. Um, <clears throat> and just for fun, I'm going to pop into the tree here and kind of go over that. Uh, let's go to Ranger. Let's go to Warden. And I'll switch all that back. I'm going to allocate this, and I'm just going to take a look at Bark Skin. Um, okay. Well, it doesn't tell you what it does, but basically it's going to give you flat uh, physical damage reduction. I think it's 30 per or 30 per point uh, with 10 points total. And then once you're hit, um, you will lose bark skin and gain a more evasion chance is more or less what it does. So it doesn't say this, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't say it on this, but yeah, you can go look, look up what that does. Uh, so let's just switch back to the duelist so this isn't all messed up. Get all that out of there. There you go. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, some interesting stuff for sure. I'm probably going to go Slayer, but the curiosity of playing Warden might just overtake me. We'll have to see. Uh, I'll leave the link to the POB in the description. I hope you enjoy your league start. Hopefully I can get some more videos out here soon. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I'll see you next time. Bye.